Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan Moore from Stockholm Supply. Um, about nine months ago, I posted the very first ETH Answers video. Um, it's called Blade Drift Mist. Now, this is kind of a continuation on that video because in the comments section, I've had tons of comments, tons of views on that video, but I've had seven people basically ask the exact same question. I've had one LG Sir, Kirk, Joseph, Jared, JF, BFMX, and Dave. They're all asking essentially the same thing. My first video, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you guys have watched it. If you haven't, I'll post a link on the top here. You see, when I'm cutting with the little ripper, I'm cutting a thin veneer off and leaving the thick piece in the little ripper. So here's the question they ask. Why, if I'm using a fence, why, if I do that the same way, if I cut a thin veneer off on the outside of my board, isn't that accomplishing the same thing as my little ripper. And now the thing is that is absolutely the best way to use the fence. Cut the thin side off because that thin side will always stress more than the thick side. But there's a couple major issues with the fence that we got to deal with first. So if you're watching a video online or in person, someone doing a demonstration on using a fence, one thing they always neglect to talk about or usually neglect to talk about is prepping the wood before they cut it. Now I bought this piece of oak um, from a big box store locally here. Now it's a nice plain piece of red oak, nice and straight, no knots, it looks nice. But if we look a little bit closer at it, and say I was gonna cut it against my fence here, watch what this does. You see how that's got a rock to it? This is not straight. This has been put through a planer, but a planer does not make things flat, it makes things parallel. So if I wanted to cut this piece of oak right here, I would have no choice. I would have to joint that first. It's not something I should do. It's something I have to do. Um, so you always got to face joint that piece right here. Now this one's not a huge deal because I measured this earlier. I don't know if I have my measuring tape up here still, but this is five and a half inches wide. A lot of guys that own a joiner, it's six inches wide. Some guys have an eight inch. Um, now if I'm dealing with something like this, this is right off the sawmill. Same problem. It's gonna rock against the fence. I have no choice. I have to face joint that before I run that through my fence or that's gonna rock and that's gonna bind my blade. The problem with this board, this board is eight and a half inches wide. Not a lot of guys have bigger than an eight, eight inch joiner. Now some guys do and if you do, you're lucky. Uh, but for those of us who do not have a big enough jointer, there is no way I can resaw this board with my bandsaw. Even if my bandsaw has the capacity, I can't do it because of this right here. Now, interesting little tidbit about the little ripper. When I clamp something in there, this is not a straight board at all. When I clamp something in there, the first thing that happens is I've turned this twisted board into a perfectly flat, perfectly jointed board. So this is not going to rock and this is not going to bind my bandsaw blade. So what I'll do here, I'm going to get rid of this fence for a second. Slide this up against here and we are going to lock it in my claws and we're just going to keep it as straight to that blade as I can. Now this has a great big twist in it. So there's going to be no real way I'm going to be able to get it perfect. I'm going to tilt it back just a bit here, but I'm going to get it close. Okay. That's going to be as close as I'm going to be able to get it there. So now the next problem we have with the fence, let's say I don't want to cut a thin veneer off the outside and readjust the fence every time. Let's say I want to cut this board right down the middle. Let's adjust the fence so we can see this a little bit better here. So we're gonna rip this oak board right down the middle. Now we've already jointed it. We made it as straight as we can, so we can do that. So here's what I want you guys to ask yourselves. As I'm cutting this piece of oak, this piece of oak, it's gonna have stress in it. Which side of this board, as I'm cutting it right down the middle, is gonna stress? Now if we think about that, the answer is pretty obvious that both sides are going to stress. They're probably going to stress pretty equally. So regardless of what I do, this piece on the inside 
it's going to bind against that fence and put pressure on the side of the blade, therefore causing drift, which is what the whole first video was about. Now, here's the best question that you guys can ask me. It's a really good question. When I'm cutting with a little ripper, when I'm cutting with a carriage, and I want to cut something right down the middle, which side is going to stress? Okay, so we think about this. Well, both sides are going to stress, right? It's going to want to open up, just like it did with the fence. So if that's the case, if both sides are going to stress, how come I don't bind the blade on this side? Isn't this exactly the same as a fence? Let me show you what's going to happen. I'm going to make one cut, and I want you guys to watch here. Hopefully this piece of wood's got lots of stress in it, and it'll be really nasty, but we'll see here. So that right there is about halfway through. If you look right there, that's already opened up about 3 sixteenths of an inch. So we gotta figure out, if I were using a fence, how are we gonna hold that half inch piece of wood up against my fence without it pushing into the blade? I personally don't know how to do that. Okay, so when you guys watch that, by the end of it, it had opened up more than a quarter of an inch. Very obvious that this piece of wood stress. Watch what happens when I back the little ripper up. Watch the blade here. All right, you see it there? You guys can see that. You notice, perfectly parallel to that blade. This piece of wood I have clamped in the jaws here did not move. How come? Pretty simple. Let me loosen it off here. You might see it right away. As soon as I loosen it, each one of these claws is holding by eight different points. Well, each claw is holding by four different points, eight in total. As soon as I take that out, basically what I've done is I've turned this piece of wood I had clamped in the ripper, who was perfectly sturdy, back into a piece of wood that is free to twist. So if we look, you look at that right there. It's not flat. Every piece of wood I clamp in the jaws of the little ripper is gonna stay straight. It's not gonna move until you release it from the claws. That right there is what makes the little ripper so different. And that right there is actually a really nice book mat that you guys can see there. So that's about almost 17 inches wide that we have a little flat clock. Now, I hope that kind of answers your questions, but that basically breaks it down why fences cause so many issues on a band, so why they don't work. Now, if anybody else has any questions, um, please leave a comment. Now, if you're gonna leave a comment, I get two different kinds of comments. I get good ones and I get bad ones. Now, if you're gonna leave a bad one, I love bad ones just as much as the good ones, um, you can call me stupid, you can call me ugly, all sorts of things, but try not to drop too many F-bombs or I will delete them because my nephews like to read the comments, so I'd appreciate that. So, um, yeah, again, any other questions, uh, you can email me at info at stockandsupply.com 
or comment on the video. And yeah, please subscribe. And thank you guys for watching.